with Uncle Sam being so busy with the war and all, and the gold bar being so small, we thought it was best if we held on to it for him, splitting it four ways. Not that everybody was happy with that arrangement. Well, maybe it won't buy you a whole truck, but you can start with the hubcaps and build from there. Shut your trap, Sweetwater. Oh, we're going to Zabagrad, huh? Nice place? It's 20 clicks behind enemy line. Important harbor. The army's launching on offensive, and we're going to be the first ones to go in. Haven't they got guys specially trained for that? Well, we're going in before them. They're too expensive to waste. Yeah, that makes sense. Weren't you supposed to be shipping home about now, Sarge? Tomorrow, Haggard. One more day of this shit, and the only thing I'm going to be fighting a blue mark. Yeah, I hear you, Sarge. Next up, the Caribbean. Well, after Zabograd. Zabograd a ding dong. I'm out of here, boy. Hey, sweet. Ain't this the same fancy thing that was on that dead guy? Acting on Verba. Yep, sure is. Let's check it out. Could be a trap. Hey, new guy, you check it out. Hey guys, and welcome back to Battlefield Bad Company. Uh, this is the second kind of collectible that you'll see in the map throughout the game. You'll find these gold bar drops everywhere. If they leave gold around like that, just think how much they must have. It depends on how easy it is to find. Some of them are in plain sight like that one. Some of them are quite out of the way. I won't be getting them all because a lot of the times you just have to run around in forests for half an hour trying to find the place. We've got some Russian movement over there. They haven't seen us. And if they do, it doesn't really matter because we're easily replaced and we won't be missed. They do tend to leave that acting on verb sign outside though, so you do kind of get a hint. Like I say, it is kind of long-winded to actually get them all, so since you don't really get anything for it, it's not worth the hassle. All you get is an achievement or a trophy, depending on which platform you're playing on. It's kind of fun if you want to explore the game more, because the game is actually pretty open-ended. Generally, the only limitations on where you can go are the red areas surrounding, you know, sort of the mission area, but Oftentimes in the larger maps, there's actually a fair amount of places you can go where you don't really need to to actually complete the mission. That kind of confused me there seeing uh, Redford, because obviously I had gone past him and there was no way he could have got up there. The Team members tend to teleport around fairly liberally, actually, and can kind of, kind of screw you up if you don't expect them to be there. Russians are on the move. You'll notice this house has another acting on verb sign outside of it, so somewhere in here is another box of gold bars. It's this sort of flow-breaking thing that makes me not really want to bother getting them all. One of the things I do quite like about this game, and it, it's kind of going over the same sort of point, but the graphics are quite nice in environmental lighting. Basically what I mean is that it's kind of subtle, and it, it shows up in this level and a few other ones, but it'll start off quite dark, you know, during dusk time, but then it will slowly actually turn lighter as the sun gets brighter. Regroup! Bravo 1 Charlie, this is Mike 1 Juliet. Over. This is Bravo 1 Charlie Actual. Over. You are go for objective backfield. Out. Okay, listen up guys. Our armored division is moving in, and our job is to cut off Russian supply lines before they get here. Let's get ready. This is the plan. We hit the weapons depot first. Once we have that area secured, we regroup and we move on to the fuel dump. Excuse me, Sarge, but wouldn't it be easier to do it the other way around? Or, or we could split up into teams and take them both at the same time. 
Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Or I could shoot the two of you and do this thing along with Marlo. Uh, okay, we'll do it your way. You're the boss. Here we get our first proper chance to drive a boat. It's a fairly decent vehicle, actually. It's got a couple of uh, mounted grenade launchers on it. One to the rear and one to the front. You can switch seats into them, so if you see any enemies coming along like that, you can just switch over and the boat will stay where it is most of the time. You don't actually have to do the objectives in the order that Redford suggested. I mean, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want. The game doesn't railroad you too much. It's sort of natural to do them in the order he suggested though, so we may as well do that. One of the things you do see in this game is uh, sort of optional like nests of enemies that are sitting around. Most of the time it's not really worth your risk actually going in and taking them out because it won't actually affect anything. It's mostly just if you want to go shooting. I'm mostly going to be concentrating on keeping things going, keeping the, the movement up because, like I say, it does tend to get a little repetitive. Back there was an optional area where there are a few enemies just sitting around in a little outpost. It's actually one of the areas where you'll find some gold bars if you do go to investigate. So again, sometimes it's sort of, you know, fairly obvious, but still off the beaten path, kind of. This area always seems to screw me up with the radar's height notification. The radar, if you look as it sort of moves around, is actually 3D and you can't see when people are above or below you but it's a weird kind of 3D projection and it can get really confusing sometimes trying to figure out where a one last guy is as it stands at the moment I'm trying to go around trying to find this last guy in the building but I still can't quite see where he is it's normally a good idea to just lob a couple grenades in an upper floor window and well you might get lucky Again, I have no idea where this guy is, so... Yeah, in the end, I stopped looking for him. You can blow up these things with just the regular underslung grenade launcher. Or you can get pickups of C4 lying around like this. Normally, near any objective which you have to actually blow up, they will drop some C4 or some kind of explosive for you. So you never really get screwed unable to complete the objectives. I still don't know where that guy is. He must be on one of the upper floors, but I couldn't see him anywhere. You can see there that in the end, one of my team must have actually got him, since the dot isn't there on the radar anymore. The dots don't time out, they will stay there as long as the enemy is alive, so you can pretty reliably use them to tell where enemies are and, and when they die. The next objective is just over the bridge above us, so I'm going to hijack this vehicle. They're fairly generous about leaving vehicles around, actually. You're never too hard up for finding a vehicle to get yourself around anywhere. Sometimes the driving can be a little finicky. I'm driving a little careful around these boxes because if you go into them at just the wrong angle, even quite shallow, you'll sort of jackknife out and get stuck for quite a while.
There are a few different ways you can always attack bases when there are loads of enemies around. I tend to just sort of move from area to area, clearing it out as I find people there. Or as I don't find people there, as is often the case. We could have driven up in the vehicle and just sat in relative safety, shooting anyone who appears in windows. The enemy won't be too intelligent, and I don't think they actually ever use explosives unless they're scripted to spawn with, like, a rocket launcher. One of the advantages of going house to house is that, relatively speaking, you stay in pretty good cover throughout the time. You're never too exposed except when you're moving between buildings, and you're not usually too bad for that. One of the things I should point out is that there's no kind of pistol in this game. If you're caught while reloading, you pretty much just need to take cover. In theory, you could switch to your grenade launcher, but oftentimes that's just going to screw you over and kill yourself. Some of the weapons do come with a pistol as a secondary instead of the grenade launcher but most of them come with uh, an actual throwable hand grenade. We'll see some of those later. Yeah! Who the hell did that? For some reason in this section they decided to make you have to go all the way upstairs to get that one last piece of fuel. You'd think they would just make it easy on us and let us shoot them all from downstairs, but I guess not. Taken care of. Okay, regroup. Bravo one, Charlie. This is Mike One Juliet. We have a Russian advance team approaching the bridge. They're your priority target. You cannot let them control the bridge. Over. Mike One Juliet, we spread real thin down here. How about some air support? Over. Bravo One Charlie, negative on support request. I've got nothing for you right now. Can you deal with the situation? Over. Yeah, we can deal. Out. I hate being dependable. Sarge, see that thing over there? I think it's a Russian mortar guidance system. Interesting. Bet we could use it against them. Hell of a bet, Sarge. Hell of a bet. The game does sort of slowly introduce these secondary weapons which you can get here. This one is the mortar strike and it's pretty damn useful at taking out enemies at range, as well as arm if you don't have any other good explosives. This, as you maybe saw, will replace the C4, so as soon as you pick it up, then you drop the C4. I think you can see, though, it's a pretty good replacement. The only real problem is that it does have a little bit of a cooldown, so in this case I kind of get caught flat-footed, because I can't use it, and highlight the enemy having seen me, I'm kind of sitting duck. Bravo One Charlie, this is Mike One Juliet. I've got some good news for you guys. The attack on Zabograd has started. Continue to city limits and hold for further orders. Out. You heard her. We're moving in. That's fine with me. We get in first, maybe you'll find some gold. That's not why we're here. You want to sail the Caribbean? You gotta buy a boat, right? One of the things is obviously we just blew up the bridge that we came across, so we need to take the lower passage and just drive over the shallow area of the river. I don't remember exactly what happens if you do the objectives in the other order, if the enemies still spawn on the bridge but you're on the right side of it or not. 
I think possibly those enemies spawn on that objective in particular, no matter which order you do them in. In theory, you could of course beach the boat on the other side of the river and just go up straight to there. I've said it before, but the machine gun on the top of the vehicle here is pretty damn good. I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be good at taking out anything except infantry, but it can do a damn good job against even armor. Now I'm not entirely sure if these guys are meant to be commandos. Some of the Russian forces do have the Balaclava uniform, but these guys always seem to be a little bit more nasty than the normal Russian troops. Bravo 1 Charlie, this is Mike 1 Juliet. The Russians are in better shape than we thought. We need you to take out the defensive positions. That's objective offside for the record. Out. Did you sound a bit upset? I thought you sounded upset. That can't be a good sign. Must have been something you said. I said? I, I never talked to Listen him. up. Objective offside is a backup plan. It means our tanks are in trouble. We better get those guns right now and stay in line this time. So it's time to get down to some good old urban warfare. I think the game does do a pretty good job of mixing it up between open-ended and vehicle sections as well as sort of tight quarters and infantry action. I mean I'd be the first to admit that this game doesn't have a stellar single player but it certainly keeps me hooked and with the actual writing, characters and humour in it, it's definitely a good game to play. These launchers always gave me a little bit of a problem. I mean, they're not actually difficult for us, because we can just shoot whoever's on them, but actually blowing them up is always a pain. A good, well-placed grenade like that'll take them out, but it's always nicer to use some explosives, and I'm not entirely sure if there is a C4 drop around here. You'll see there that someone's using a mounted grenade launcher at us. Fortunately, they're not usually armoured, so you can just shoot the guy on them with relative ease, but they'll certainly do a lot of damage to the buildings around you. I'm not sure where that guy went. I'm pretty sure he was in this alleyway, but he must have been in the next one along. I don't know. And here's me having to eat my words. Uh, I said that the launchers didn't give us any trouble, but if you actually get a direct hit by one of them, it does a lot of damage. The auto-injector is kind of an interesting game decision. I mean, I really like the way it plays out. You actually have to be careful about when you use it, because it doesn't recharge instantly. And it kind of has a good balance between regenerating health and actual pickups. Health packs. Russians! Now you can obviously see here that I was trying to blow up the launcher with the damn mortar strike, but didn't quite manage it. I needed to finish it off with the grenade launcher. And look how much health I had left. Hardly anything. One of the limitations you sort of notice with the destruction engine after playing around with it a bit is that the main supports of the buildings don't actually ever go away. You can't blow up an entire building, you can just blow out all the main walls. Now I'm not sure if that tank did it on purpose or if it was just a complete fluke, but it actually reversed out of the worst of the mortar strike. I'm pretty sure it took a fair amount of damage, but it's not actually gone yet. 
I tried to throw in a grenade there, but that didn't quite do enough, so pretty much just need to wait for the mortar strike to recharge and then give it another shot. You can take out tanks with just underslung grenades, but it takes quite a few, and you have to step out into full view of the tank, so it's not normally the best idea. There are, are other ways of getting rid of them if you really want to get up close and personal. One of the good things about the mortar strike here is that you can actually use a lot of cover to your advantage, and the tank here cannot actually see me. But I can call down the mortar strike, and that's pretty much the end of it. We have a couple of launches to take out. There's one over here in the corner of this building on the roof. I called down a mortar strike because, you know, obviously it's out in the open, so it should be easy enough to blow up with that. The main problem is when they're actually covered by supports and things and supporting walls that don't go away, like I said. They sure have a lot of this thing. Over there. The design of this village is kind of weird because this one house here that the last launcher is in is actually out over a tiny little bridge. It's almost got a, a canal in between it and the rest of the village. I don't know if it's meant to be sort of stately home or something, but it always you know, seemed kind of weird to me. As fun as it is seeing the mortar strike completely demolishing a building like that, it is still infuriating to see it actually doing nothing to the vulnerable little gun inside it. I think that's the last one. Damn it, this town is going to need a makeover. Bravo One Charlie, this is Mike One Juliet, over. This is Bravo One Charlie Actual, over. Seems you saved the day again. Things got a little hectic up here. Over. Yeah, well, they're pretty hectic down here, too. I can hear you, Sweetwater, but you're doing a fine job. Over. She knows my name. Focus, boys. Focus. Your orders are to rendezvous with the armor division at the beachhead. Out. Rendezvous at the beachhead. We're moving out. She knows my name, Haggard. She knows my name. I've been thinking about Miss July. How do you know she's good looking? I have this cousin who has a beautiful voice, but a face like a can of dog food. Is that the one that you dated? Yep. Cool. Well, well, look who decided to show. Better late than never, I guess, even though we've already pretty much finished the job for him. How come those guys get all the cool toys? They look good in those photos they stage for the press. Bravo One Charlie, this is Mike One Juliet. Your orders are to join up with the 32nd Armored Division for the final push into Zabograd. Over. Yeah? We were hoping for some R&R &R at this point. Over. That's just gonna have to wait. We're low on troops right now, so Command is throwing everything we've got at that town. And that includes your squad. Over. I hear you. Out. <laughs> 